welcome to Disney A, the Canadian-themed Disney travel podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. Brandon, um, do you want to fly with Dumbo? Um, depends. I Elephants are a bit of a red flag for me. <laughs> okay, okay. How about... <laughs> Maybe, Dumbo, probably okay. Yeah, okay. Well, if you don't want to fly with Dumbo, what, would you like to fly in a pirate ship? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, pirates are good. How about go on a crazy town car with mr toad oh yes yeah okay um he's a good driver I've yeah heard. yeah is no problems nope, there. none whatsoever no definitely not um how about go visit snow white yeah i heard she's kind of scary yeah. although less scary, less these, scary, days. Less scary these days what about wonderland uh I, teacups are not the best <laughs> but i do like um cats <laughs> Even ones that disappear? Yeah. Yeah. Especially those ones. <laughs> yeah. Well, today we are talking about Fantasyland. In oh, case you couldn't tell the, from all that. The plane, the plane. Oh, no, wait. No, that's no, Fantasy that's Island. Fantasy Island. Oh. Yeah, it's different. So, totally so confused. Different. Totally confused. different. Oh, dang. So this is one of our... Um, well, we don't have a set schedule for these, but we do a couple of recurring kind of themes. And one that we do is the Disneyland Lens. Land Lens. Well, we like talking about the park. Because yeah. we don't get to go there very much. Exactly. So we get to talk about it. Exactly. And we've kind of been talking about different lands. And uh, we are, this time, talking about one of the original ones, one of the remaining original ones, Fantasyland. Yeah. And you didn't mention the best part of it. but Is it Matterhorn? Fine. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna talk. Oh, Small World. You mean Small, small World. And how. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to that, Brandon, what's your nerd thing this week? Well, I actually have a, I have a pretty decent one. Oh, do you? Um... I finally got back into reading because it's summertime and mm-hmm, reading mm-hmm. in the sunshine is pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Um, and I finished the first book of Wheel of Time, Ooh, which nice. is a fantasy series. I, I'm into fantasy reading. That's pretty nerdy. Yeah, that is that is pretty nerdy. It is yep. pretty, mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. as nerdy as you can get, yeah, really. Yeah, pretty much right up there. <laughs> I mean, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I finished the, that first book. Never read it before. Big famous series and the Amazon show mm-hmm. came out earlier this year so it kind of sparked me to yeah you said to, you wanted to read some of them anyway to finally i the first book actually i owned in a copy that had it was split in half oh okay because like half of the first book is as long as a normal book <laughs> so but it's pretty good um it's a long series it's like there's like 12 14 books or right. something crazy like that but the first one is very 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 lord of the rings that's what you said you said i'd like it because i like lord of the like rings. if if you just like talk about the high level plot points of it it sounds like lord almost like a car- carbon <laughs> copy of lord of the rings but there's a lot more women in it so that's, oh, that's, cool. that's actually cool. you did say i'd like it yeah there's they have like some mar- matriarchal societies going Ooh, on and it's, cool. it's very very interesting Ooh. that way so yeah no i, I liked it cool I'm uh, I've been doing a lot of reading too this summer. I got... yes, you have. Well, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> well, that's just normal. That's yeah. just normal. Yeah. <laughs> but it's outside during the summer. It's oh. different that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm actually like normally I read like a lot of historical fiction and drama and realistic fiction. Um, I write realistic fiction, so I tend to lean towards that. But I am on a like, I don't know if my mind is thinking that I need to be reading October books right now. Because I was reading a I'm... slasher book, and then I'm reading um, the a vampire, like, pulpy kind of fiction the, series. The books that True Blood was Yes, based on. exactly. Because mm-hmm. I had that series, and I had read the first couple before, and I, but I didn't really remember. Then we watched a few of the shows. I said, I'm just going to read this whole series this summer. Suki. 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 <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm on, bo- I'm on board. I'm ready for spooky season already. Although I love summer. Yeah. I'm, I am ready for Mentally, spooky season. Yeah. Yeah. You just try to get me to watch horror movies. It, yeah. <laughs> spooky season. Okay. But anyway, yeah, my brain is definitely going that way reading wise too. So anyway, that's fun. No. So that's my nerd thing now too. I'll do reading with you. Okay. Different book though. Not Animal Crossing. <laughs> Weird. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Brandon, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, I got something fancy that you made me here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, again, summery. It's nice and summery yeah. outside. So, uh, I got some vanilla vodka with oh. a watermelon bubbly or some, some sparkling. Something, aha, uh-huh, I think maybe. Aha, uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. It's wa- watermelon flavored anyway. Yeah. Vanilla vodka and watermelon flavored mm. sparkling water. That is, is very It's summery. actually quite delicious. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the difference. If it was fall, I would be recommending pumpkin mm. or apple. 
or something like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's fruit, and I am drinking um, mango beer. Mango beer. <laughs> yes, I I was enjoying the mango beer. Yeah, earlier. and then I I You're grabbed just fin- I stole a glass from your growler. <laughs> You're finishing it off, so that's good. Waste mm. not, want not. Exactly. Also, uh, and for our Marvel update, She-Hulk is coming out August 18th. Now, this is significant. This was actually going to be in my news. But uh, we have a date change. A weird, random, what they, the heck date they c- change. They cannot make up their minds no. when they want stuff to release on Disney no. Plus, apparently. Okay, so this is a one-day difference date change. It's moving from Wednesday release to a Thursday release. The thir- yeah, so they... They started releasing Disney Plus shows on Fridays. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then Loki made the move to Wednesdays. Which makes sense. He was a trickster. He was being weird. Yeah. and then But they kept up with that. Which was And now cool. She-Hulk is going to be like, no, nah, I want to go on Thursdays. And she would say that to the camera because she likes to break the That's wall. true. She does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I heard that we were counting down to August. Yes. Um, Andor was supposed to come out in August. They yes. Pushed, they that, pushed now that into back. September. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is good. There's not going to be overlap anymore. Well, I'm okay with that. that yeah. I was I was annoyed when Obi Wan was overlapping with Miss Marvel. That was it, like spread it out. Yeah. So then we don't have like a dead zone. Yeah. And I mean, of course, I'm really um, like selfish, so I can watch a lot more TV and things like that during the summertime. So I was like, oh, twice is good, but it's at the end of the month. I'm back to school then anyway. So I'm like, no, no, don't make me, don't give me Andor yeah. when I'm super busy with back to and, school stuff. And there's lots of stuff. Speaking of of fantasy you mm-hmm. got you got your lord of the rings amazon exactly. series which i'm interested skeptical but interested in mm-hmm. and you got your game of thrones prequel series which again skeptical but interested i'm less skeptical i'm well because i don't have like high hopes placed in i'm just like oh this will be fun to it watch fun. for a while I, yeah the trailers for both i like yeah i was like i can we I have can a lot of that. stuff coming in september apparently we're going to be scheduling our lives around what shows are coming out as per usual. As, yeah, as We're as nerds. Yeah, right. that's what happens. And I think that takes us to the news. Disney A News Update. Hey, Brandon, do you know how you said you were ready for spooky season? I am. How about holiday season? No. <laughs> no? No. No. I, Mariah Carey has to stay in her box <laughs> until November the 2nd. First. Okay. <laughs> Mariah Carey, you Stay. stay. <laughs> Well, I bring it up because holiday events have been announced for mm. Disneyland, as well as 23 new Christmas ornaments have now arrived in Disneyland, and they look pretty cool. And then I'm like, ooh, I would like these. <sighs> yeah, almost a get- You just calm down with your sighing. Okay, so the Disneyland Resort announces the return of the holiday season, November 11th to January 8th. They do like to spread that out. It it's goes. True. It goes ho- spooky season right into holiday season, <laughs> like just bang, bang. Oh, yeah. So, in uh, Disney's California Adventure Park, they have the 50-foot-tall Christmas tree on Buena Vista Street, as well as all the holiday stuff in Cars Land, which actually looks really cool. Um, They have the nighttime spectacular World of Color Season of Light, so the regular World of Color. Yep. So, they're bringing that back, which is pretty exciting. They have the Disney Festival of the Holidays, which will highlight a diverse season of celebrations, including, including... Christmas, Navidad, Diwali, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Three Kings Day, and so on. And they're going to be marketplaces across the park, menus, sip and savor pass, the whole show. Oh, like a yep. whole festival. That's, yep. that's actually pretty cool. So that's pretty cool. And also there's going to be nightly holiday concert at the Palisade stage as part of this whole event. Yeah, they used, they did that for a long time and then yep. they had like ramped it back, of course. Cause of course. Why would happen? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's good that stuff is, like, kind of returning to normal. Yeah, well, and then there's Mickey's Happy Holidays, a procession of Disney and Pixar characters dancing and marching along to the upbeat rhythms of holiday do- toy drummers, and the Disney Viva Navidad Street Party Returns featuring Mickey and Minnie donning festive fiesta attire. Um, you think they'd throw some cocoa in there? I Probably. <laughs> uh, like that just seems like a no-brainer to well, me. Well, especially because this is in DCA, which is like very Pixar-themed, yeah, right? Yeah, but like, I don't know. Everybody likes Coco because Coco is awesome, so... So, and if you... Speaking of DCA and movies that are awesome, returning this year to Paradise Gardens Park, there is um, Mirabelle from Encanto. And Santa Claus, if you want to meet Santa, he is going to show up. Santa? Gonna take, yeah, well, I know him. You know what? Okay, Straight up, I feel like this time of year he should be at the North Pole, but he's yeah, just like, he's oh got no, some, he's you got go some ahead. P- 
prep work to do. Yeah, but no, okay? he's just like, it's cool, elves. You you handle it. Yeah, the elves do all the work. That's true. He's gonna go that hang out. That guy gets all the credit. <laughs> elves do all the work. Uh, he actually has story a, of my life. <laughs> he actually has a rustic home in the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail. So, so that's this is cool. after like the villains grow. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Almost like the day after. Hmm. So the Yuletide spirit will also shift into high gear <laughs> in Cars Land. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> two seasonal attractions. Well, there's two transformations here. There's Luigi's Joy um, to the World. <laughs> get it? No. Yeah. Oh. And Mater's Jingle Jamboree. But now, okay, now now there's that. And then Disneyland. Because Mater's is, is a music-based ride. Yeah. And so they would play, like, Christmas music. Exactly. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Very cool, I Now, guess. over in Disneyland, they'll be adorned with festive holiday decor, the iconic 60-foot-tall Christmas tree on Main Street, USA, Sleeping Beauty's Sec- Wind... Like, second most famous Christmas yep. tree, probably? Yep, second most famous Christmas tree, yeah. You got your Rockefeller, and then well, you got the Disneyland. Well, you did until Hawkeye, like, oh, come on, Hawkeye. <laughs> well, actually, it was, it was Kate Bishop. That's true. Kate Bishop. It's Bishop. <laughs> I was trying to be a little there. Didn't make it work. I got what you're going for. I just didn't get there. Mm. Sleeping Beauty's Winter Castle will enchant from day to night with, um, basically, they redo it with icicles and twinkling lights. In Town Square, favorite Disney characters will be in their finest holiday attire. And, of course, they have different new outfits, both for Halloween and Christmas. Does Donald wear pants uh, in the holiday season? I don't think so. No wonder he almost froze to death in that cartoon. That's true. No pants. Dude. Put on your pants. Put on some pants. Yeah. Shout out to our episode where we talk about the Disney shorts, hey? <laughs> yeah. Anna, Elsa, and Olaf from Frozen with Mickey, Minnie, Santa, and many other friends will celebrate the season in a Christmas fantasy parade, which is a daily musical procession of floats, the famous marching toy soldiers, dancing gingerbread cookies, and more. Believe in Holiday Magic is a fireworks spectacular, and that is the one that features the snowfall. And the projections on Main Street USA and the facade of It's a Small World. And there is also nightly holiday dance parties at the Tomorrowland Terrace. Um, two Disneyland attractions are the same ones that always get their overlay. It's a Small World holiday. And they do, do you Can- know what song they change it to instead of It's a Small World? No. Jingle bells. <laughs> jingle. Oh, yeah, nine minutes of jingle bells. That's what you need in your life. Um, wow. Okay. And, of course, the Haunted Mansion holiday is the other one. Yes, that one I want to see very badly. It, it looks very cool. So cool. In downtown Disney, a lot of the decor changes. There's photo opportunities, festive musical entertainment, and special offerings from shops and restaurants. They like their seasonal um, yes, events. And, and there's going to be lots of treats coming to the parks. As oh, well. Oh, yeah. Tons of those. Of course, they haven't announced those yet because no. they're going to be focusing on Halloween first. We will talk about those exactly later. And then, of course, they do the annual huge gingerbread house display at the Grand Californian. Oh, yes. And so on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, so, speaking of Halloween. That, like, yeah, let's get back to spooky okay. season. Okay. Like, well, you know how. It's only August. Come on. I know. But they, they put these because of the events and they want to, yeah, like, get yeah, people buying yeah. their tickets. So, you know how last week I talked about how um, Jared Leto is being rumored, not confirmed, but rumored for the role of Hatbox Ghost in the upcoming Haunted Mansion? Yeah, right? very strong rumor. Yeah. I, well, I, I have another how, very strong... I don't strong... know how that guy gets, keeps uh... getting roles. Like... <laughs> I don't know. Well, another very strong rumor, and tell me what you think about this one. Madam Leota as Jamie Lee Curtis. I can see it. I like this one. I love... Jamie Lee Curtis is a cool person. She is, like, awesome. Yeah. And, and, and she... She's distinctly linked to spooky season. Exactly. So it's it works. Wor- it works. And, but also like Disney family kind of things yeah. too. Like how hard is it to straddle those roles, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. The, she's yeah. cool. But she's, she's super cool. cool. So I'm in favor of this and I hope this rumor turns out to be true. And then the last little one is we actually have a Toontown update. Yeah. So everything's been closed off and no one can see anything except they have now painted the hills, the Toontown hills, so of course people can see that. So we do have confirmed that a lot more construction is going on. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. That's, uh, that's supposed to open up next summer? Yeah, I don't know what the exact date, though. It might be but May. Like, yeah, like, like it's 2023, yeah. 2023, it'll be open for summer season. Yeah, I believe so. But then again, they're the subs a, were like... <laughs> they're doing a lot of work for those. Yeah, mm-hmm. And I think, uh, I think that takes us to the main topic. <laughs> the park fantasy 
land. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> was there supposed to be pixie dust? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> Hold I, on. I, okay. Do it again. Fantasy. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. <laughs> Very good. Oh, wow. We're like a, we're like a team. Okay. Yikes. So, Fantasyland, as I said, was one of the opening day attractions in 1955. Opening day lands, yes. I said attractions, didn't I? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There are some opening day attractions in here. Yeah. Uh, quite a number, actually. Quite a few, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, opening day lands. And this is the opening day address regarding Fantasyland. Here is the world of imagination, hopes, and dreams. In this timeless land of enchantment, the age of chivalry, magic, and make-believe are reborn, and fairy tales come true. Fantasyland is dedicated to the young and the young in heart, to those who believe that when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. Duh. Oh, that's so good. And, and that's it, on the plaque. Yeah, and all. Exactly. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is said to be Walt's favorite land, and of course, the centerpiece. Of, yeah, there's two centerpieces, kind of, because the centerpiece of Disneyland is the castle, which is technically in Fantasyland. It's the, it's the entrance of Fantasyland. Right. And and then once you're in there, it's supposed to be the carousel. And both of those are very of course, strongly linked because it's the carousel that, well, the a carousel is what first inspired him yes. to create Disneyland. So Fantasyland's like a big deal. And that's deal. cool. Uh, carousels are lame, but. No, carousels are wonderful. No, okay. No, they're lame. Well, you are wrong. You're wrong. Okay. The central courtyard. Actually, I mm-hmm. will say there's one way to make a carousel cool. I was on a carousel one time. And they had this thing where you could reach out and grab a ring, and then as you were spinning around, you could chuck the ring into a oh that sounds fun into a hole for points or something. That I don't sounds know. super fun. Yeah. yeah, I was like six where years was, old at this time. This? I couldn't even reach the ring. But. <laughs> <laughs> this was in like Spokane, something. Washington. Nice, actually. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. I distinctly <laughs> remember it though because it was like this is the coolest carousel. Hey, it message us if you know what he's talking about. If that sounds familiar to you. Yeah, I probably. It was bulldozed like 20 years ago, but you know. But if you have like a weird memory of it, like remember when I was talking about the weird memory I had of certain um, Disney Channel TV shows and you thought I was crazy and then I showed them to you and I was like, not crazy. Uh, you're still crazy. <laughs> I mean, let, let's not get carried away. You're definitely crazy. Okay. Well, anyway, he, let's uh, let's run through Fantasyland, shall we? Well, no running allowed. That's true. Don't run. Yeah. Okay. Let's... Speedily walk through Fantasyland, shall right, we? You gotta get, you gotta rope drop Peter Pan, because <clears throat> otherwise you're waiting for like Forever. 45 minutes, and that's it. Yeah, it lessens the fun of Peter Pan that's if you're true. waiting too long. That's true. Um, okay, so first we have the Sleeping Beauty Castle. You and the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. Now this is a commonly known trivia item, but the castle was actually designed. What you see is the front is actually the back. Yeah. Um, so there was like the, the, yeah. the realistic model. It, it looks like, it looks like it was switched around. Uh, the, the top part. Yeah. Yeah. The top part. It's the top yeah. part. Like, uh, Walt thought that the back was more welcoming mm-hmm. than, the, than, than the front. Yeah. It was it, like more it, menacing or something. It, it flippy flop. I mean, castles are supposed to be menacing. Yeah, what do you think no, they were built for? This is that happy fantasy land one. No, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah, it was just like a, a mistake on the... Well, like the map, or I don't know the scale model anyway. Well, had and the, he had said, the model and he turned yeah. it around and he's like, This looks better. Yeah, and he and said, No, no, design, leave it that way. The designers were like, Okay, I guess. Yeah, well, I guess. Man is in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, good callback. Yep. Nice. Yep. 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 There's an episode called that. Go watch it. High five. Or listen. Nice. Okay. So, also, there's the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. Now, this hasn't been open the whole time. But uh, it, it's open right now, and it was open from 1957 to 2001, mostly, and then from t- 2008 to 2020, and then weirdly enough, it, it closed in 2020. Oh, why? What happened? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Alice in Wonderland, opening, not opening day attraction 1958, it was originally supposed to be a walkthrough because they love their walkthroughs. And, like, almost everything in, in Fantasyland was like... We should do this as a walkthrough. And the only thing we that should do this as a walkthrough was the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever done that? Uh, no. We should do that. We meant to do it this last time, and then just yeah. kind of like didn't. And oops, oops. Let's uh, prioritize that next time. I, yeah, it's just I, no. We're gonna do it. It's okay, gonna be great. Okay, okay. So Alice in Wonderland is a dark ride. This is kind of like the home of the dark rides, basically. And Alice in Wonderland is really great. Do you know? Um, it was actually one of my favorite moments uh, when we were in Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Was Tell me on about the, it. On this Alice in Wonderland ride, because we did, we ran through Fantasyland uh, 
well, we didn't run, but we did Don't all run. the rides on in Fantasyland late one night, and it was actually the was it the first or second night? It was the first. The first night of the return of the electrical light parade. Yeah, and because we had gone, it was the second. So it was it was the second because like we were there when they yeah. did the test run that was like unannounced. Yes. And um, then they did the first official one then when it was supposed to open. But we, we were at World of Color. Yeah, we did World of Color. Um, and then we went over to Fantasyland mm-hmm. late at night, and it was empty. As pro tip, Fantasyland really good at night. Yes. If, if you're in, if you're there when they do in late light, mm-hmm. late nights, um, it's awesome. You're there with a bunch of Disney adults. Yeah, and, it's true. And you can like walk on most of the rides, and yeah, it's it's, it's great. a really good way to see it. But the main uh, the Plus other the lights th- and it's fun yeah. yeah it's light lights and stuff um but the the parade was going on so mm-hmm. it was like even more empty because yes. everyone was watching the parade that was brand new mm-hmm. and we we're like okay well, well we'll we'll go on rides we get to kind of see the parade yep. here and there and we're waiting in line for for two minutes mm-hmm. and we actually have like better view of the parade than most people are <laughs> like oh this this line could actually be a little longer because we could see more of the parade <laughs> for alice in wonderland and but we get in and we hop in our little uh, vehicle. Yeah. And who's coming around the corner but Alice on her big mushroom. Yeah. And she she sees us and starts waving. She's like, you're on me. You're visiting me. <laughs> and she was all excited because we were on the Alice in Wonderland yeah. ride. And she's, yeah. Anyway, it was a really cool Disney moment. I, yeah, that I was thought. a great Disney like, moment. You were like two feet away from Alice because yeah. like, the right ride there. is like right by mm-hmm. where she goes. So uh, it, was it was really cool. cool. And it was definitely like directed at us because we had just, we were just timed perfectly. Perfect timing. So that was, that worked out really well. So a lot of these dark rides, when they were originally designed, it was intended that like you were the character, or you were with the character. So you were the character. Yeah. So and, like, it was, and that confused a lot of exactly. people. Um, so like people would hop on Peter Pan's ride and be like, Where's Peter Pan? Mm-hmm. But you're, Snow White was the big one. The idea was you were supposed to be Peter Pan. Yeah, they didn't understand that. No, no. Yeah, Snow White was the big one that got complained about a lot. Since they did the redo um, well, during and after COVID, it t- to become Snow White's Enchanted Wish instead of Snow White's Scary Adventure, it uh, like there's Snow White now more in it. But anyway, all, we have All the gone... redos are, are very good. They're excellent. Okay, but let's go back to my list here. Okay. So yeah, Alice sorry, in Wonderland. Did, no, I, it's okay. That was that was literally one of the best Disney moments on our... It was. It was a yeah. very cool moment. There's also Casey Jr. Circus Train. Now, this was an opening day attraction and was closed a lot of the time while we were there, so we didn't get to ride this one. They did close it quite a bit. Yeah, it was um, disappointing. Yeah. Dumbo the Flying Elephant, another opening day attraction. We did not ride this. Nope. It was... Uh... Huge lineup. Huge lineup and we didn't time it correctly. No, we did. We did take a picture in the Dumbo that you can take a picture of in in, in our know, dapper in our outfits. Dapper outfits yes. yes, there's another tip for you. It's a small world. Opened in 1966, and this was um, following the World's Fair. Yes, so it was from the World's Fair, and mm-hmm. they just moved it on shopped, over, shipped her back. It's you... actually really cool. Opening day, they actually had representatives of children from around the world come and bring water from their home countries or continents and, dump and it put in it the... into the... Yeah. I wonder if that water's still there. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> From 1966. Yeah. <laughs> it's a small world holiday they started doing in 1990. I mean, they don't have any water in California, so they better keep what uh, they get. That's true. It's a small world holiday to open in 1997, and that's a seasonal one. King Arthur Carousel is another opening day attraction, as was the Mad Tea Party. We did not do the Mad Tea Party, but that was by choice. <laughs> We did take a picture in the in the standby yeah, teacup. Yeah, that was fun. It was uh, that was one, one of the better photo pass yeah. people mm-hmm. was there um, for one of the magic photos kind of things, and uh, we were also in our dapper outfits for that one. We took a lot of pictures in our dapper outfits. It's true, we did. I'm sure those are all on Instagram if people want to check. Most them of them, out. like well, yeah, I can, the good I, ones. Anyway. I keep pushing more like periodically, like randomly. Mm, yes, slow drip. Yeah. Yep, exactly. The Matterhorn Bobsleds, one of our favorites, one of the ones we rode the most. The first tubular steel roller coaster. It's now true. that's right up my alley. Uh-huh. So th- that has made like almost all of the uh, mega thrill rides possible. So it's true. Well, d- well done. Cool. Di- Hats you know, off, Disney. Disney is not a thrill ride. Nope. Place, but uh, they birthed the steel roller coaster. They so did. yeah, it's pretty hard to complain about that. No. I- um, now Matterhorn opened in 1959 and it's, it's gone over some renovations. Harold's like a lot, there's projections now and that kind of stuff. The carts have changed, cars have changed. Yeah. You can't cuddle anymore. No, you we did the cuddle one. 
we did cuddle on the matter 2008 in, way back in 2008 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah that was you know how long ago that was we're old oh my <laughs> god um but yeah you used to you used to cuddle you stay i was like i hope single, you like the people you're the with. single rider line must have been really awkward back then <laughs> It's like I really hope I really hope you like the people you're sitting with. <laughs> I remember riding with my siblings, and it was like this awkward, like who's gonna ride with who kind of thing. And yeah, we always hey, little just put, little brother. Yeah, we would always put like a little one with the big one because if you had like two siblings close in age, it just was, yeah, it was just really weird. awkward. It was, it was awkward, especially when you're like a teenager, and it yeah. like, seems even more awkward than it actually is. <laughs> high 16 year old brother when i'm 18 yeah this exactly. Is very awkward exactly exactly but anyway it uh, now there are chairs and do you remember there's certain cars that have more leg room and they would tell you every time yeah so the the cars it's it's a two-car bobsled that, that are attached and so you got seats one through six mm-hmm. because there's three in each um seat four is the only one that i actually fit in mm. okay um it's the front seat it doesn't have like as much extra leg room, but the first yeah. seat in the second car has way more leg room, and they they would see me because I'm very tall. Um, yes, yes. And the cast members would be like, "Oh, yeah, you should sit in in seat four. Yeah, and sometimes they'd have us like wait, so you would specifically go in there. Thankfully, I'm very bendy, so if I don't sit in seat four, I can I can like squeeze in there and brace yeah. just right because it is a very rocky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm rough ride so Super otherwise fun. if i if i don't brace correctly my knees are bashing yeah. all over the place and... my um this was one of my favorite rides to ride when we because we were going trying to do a lot of while well, we were doing our favorite rides we were there dapper day which was our last day when we were there but we also really want to do a lot of the vintage rides mm. so we did this one and this one was the most awkward to get in and out of with my giant poofy dress yes you had a lot of crinoline um and you took up the whole car yeah and your, so i just like shoved the crinoline was very large you, you, you were like a princess yeah. riding the roller coaster riding the roller coaster. <laughs> um and now matt we're talking a bit about matterhorn here but we really liked it but matterhorn um so Walt wanted to do you know, something for the skyline, quote unquote, of Disney, but he also wanted to have a little bit of a thrill in there. And then he was famous for doing all these explorations and things like that and would send people off to like bring back stuff that's a large part of Adventureland and, and Frontierland. He likes skiing. Yeah. And he went to the Swiss Alps. And was and like, he, this is what I want to bring back. He saw the Matterhorn and was like, that's a cool mountain. Yeah. I should build it. Yeah. And, and then he did. Yeah, because he's Walt. He could do that, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and then he was just like, make that happen. The funny thing is, we we learned that they they are having some small structural yes. issues with the Matterhorn. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Um, one of the options was to like tear it down and rebuild it, and they the city of Anaheim was like, no, yeah, you can't do that because this would not be approved now. It's true. So <laughs> it's fine it's now. It's so huge. Mm-hmm. They. Uh, They've grandfathered it in, but it's too tall to be, yeah. at, uh, like, it would not be approved now. So they're going, they're um, closing it down in, like, little spurts to work on different sections of it. Yeah, it's just... totally safe to ride. They yeah. just want to update it before it becomes unsafe to ride, mm. and then they have a problem. Right. And that's one of the reasons that they uh, closed down the uh, sky gondola thing right. that went through it, because there was too many holes, and the structural problems were right. were evident there as well. Right. Okay, so let's move... Oh, and the last one for Matterhorn. Used to be part of Tomorrowland. Yes, they still have the Fantasyland and Tomorrowland sides. Yes, but it's considered part of Fantasyland now. Yeah, I mean... It doesn't really fit in either place as part no, of the thing. No, it's, it's the Matterhorn. It's its own thing. It's it, it, But I'm okay with it being over in Fantasyland because it's not sci-fi at all. No, it, it doesn't fit so, with Tomorrowland at and, all. But whereas there's a lot more... They have like the alpine kind of aesthetic. It's of, just, yeah. It fits with the sound of music. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then there's the Fantasyland Theater. And right now, usually they're playing Tale of the Lion King. Did that come back yet? Or... Yeah. Okay. I, I don't. We had, we, had some, we had some COVID issues with that yes. one when it started. But uh, yeah, yeah, they, they, uh, they do the, 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 the shows at that theater, they do it more of a. It's not like a Broadway style. It's more of a panto style. Yeah. They kind of like... They, they've they done different things throughout the years. That's what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
prior to the show coming back, they were doing like the meet and greet with the princesses. Yeah, yeah they've and used they've it done for like, meet and greets before, yeah, yeah, meeting Tinkerbell. Um, my favorite things there in the past because this one opened in like it was an opening day. It was the Fantasyland Theater. So they've done different shows for the past. I have distinct memories of being in 1990. That's where they did um, like the Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers um, show or the, oh, what, what was the other, the Darkwing Duck? No, I don't, they had like Launchpad and, and oh, um, look. DuckTales? DuckTales, yeah. It was basically ooh, like, ooh. Ooh, ooh. it was basically like Saturday morning cartoon kind yeah. of show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I distinctly remember that from 1990. Tailspin. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, like that whole thing. And I think it was like an amalgamation kind of of that, but I don't really remember all the details. They were probably obviously. pushing the Disney Channel at that 100%. point. 100%. Michael Eisner was like, give me your Disney Channel money. <laughs> yep. And then when we went, when I was 12, they did the show for Pocahontas there. And I still have at the end. Did you paint with all, all of, of the, the colors, colors of the wind? At the very end, um, tissue paper Pocahontas leaves. Were oh, shot yes. from I, the ceiling, yes. and I still have them. I have heard you grabbing, you stealing the colors of the wind. I stole the colors of the wind. They are my colors <sighs> of the wind now. You're like, I'm going to steal these. <laughs> That's okay. They would have just put them in the garbage. It's so. true. Mm. So after, um, go, keep going down the list, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, this is another opening day attraction. It's the only place you can go yes. straight to hell it's in true. Disneyland. It is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something. I, like, there's there's no mm-hmm. bones about it. You, you go... <laughs> no bones, because skeletons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is a deviation from the show it was based on, which was um, well, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. And because in that one, he gets arrested, but he doesn't die. He doesn't just die? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so after Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, and we like this one, and uh, this one was taken out of Disney World. So if you want to go meet Mr. Toad, you have to do it here. For now. For now, yeah, See. exactly. We're very, ride I, this one like I can. hope they just refurbish it. Like, keep Mr. Toad around. The fact that it's one of the only ones they haven't refurbished makes me nervous. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just, just refurbish it. Yeah, do it. Just give it a little love. Peter Pan's Flight, another opening day attraction. And yes, you were in the flying pirate ships on opening day. They've refurbished everything, of course, mm-hmm. but this was oh, the yeah. original thing. Yeah. And that was, so it's been a big hit since then. Because it's unique. It is. It's a dark ride, but you're flying as opposed to riding um, like in a car or something. Mm-hmm. Pinocchio's Daring Journey, not an opening day attraction. 1983. That's a lot later than I expected. That, I would have lost money on that yep. one and that one scared me as a kid because a monstro coming out like that with the flashing lights anyway it was cool pixie hollow um meet tinkerbell and friends just like a meet and greet kind of thing snow white grotto same kind of thing you can go meet snow white there but it's also like the there's a wishing well and there's like the statues of the seven dwarfs it's like a whole thing Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Now, this opened in 2021. It is considered a new attraction, even because it changed names and changed the tone. It's in the but same it, place. It's the same ride system. Yeah. It's the same But it's listed theme. as a different one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Snow White. It, it, the new one was pretty good. They, I they actually have, really liked they it. They have some new good animatronics And they didn't take there. away my favorite thing, which I was worried about, and that's when she does the turn and the, she becomes the, the hag. The Wicked Queen is yeah. is still hag, exactly. hagging out. Mm-hmm. So, that's good. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, the Storybook Land Canal Boats, one of my favorites. I love the Storybook it's Land. It's cute. I like the giant ducks. <laughs> How'd they get them to do that? Yeah. <laughs> the, because everything's miniature, the ducks yeah. look like ma- monstrous. And this is uh, like a callback because they actually originally wanted to have a miniature land where everything was min- in miniature, mm. right? Now, the only thing left is of that concept storybook land and of course those that has been updated there's even like um frozen elements and things like that in there yeah sword in the stone that is literally the sword in the stone in front of the carousel in front of the carousel Mm -hmm. yeah and that one they have a once i think it's once a day they have someone come up and they pull the sword from the stone it's like a little ceremony oh really Mm -hmm. well they used to i don't know if they brought that back since COVID or Mm -hmm. not i have seen uh pictures of gaston trying to pull it out (laughs) actually really awesome <laughs> and then there's the fantasy fair which again was like a royal theater royal hall meet the princesses kind of thing yeah there's a whole lot of former ones did you know that junior autopia th- i'm just telling you a few things here the junior autopia was actually originally part of 
not Autopia. There was Autopia and then Junior Autopia. I didn't even know there was a Junior yep. Autopia. Yeah, so it was like... Oh, and Midget Autopia. Well, that's not 50s. the way you say that. No, nope, but that's what it was called. Uh, uh, okay. But it was like for even littler kids. It right. was like levels of driving, right? Mm-hmm. And that was from mm-hmm. the 50s. Um, it's also where you used to be able to find Videopolis. Yeah. Shout out to Defunctland. We were just watching stuff on Videopolis. Yes. Uh, so if you're interested in like Disney history or theme park history in general, <laughs> Defunctland is very interesting. It talks about a lot of stuff that doesn't exist anymore and like really well done. So. so I actually, this is listed in the former attractions because the stage used to be called the Disney Afternoon Review and it included Baloo's Dressing Room, the motorboat I cruise to Gummy wanna, Glen, I don't and go the to Rescue Baloo's Rangers Raceway. Room. I don't want to go to Baloo's Dressing Room. And also playing crazy. Um, I remember that. I was like, why do I remember going into a dressing room to meet Baloo? Like, that was a weird setup. But yeah. 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 Mm. And there are pictures of us meeting Baloo. Um, also... Was he... Was he Jungle Book Baloo? Or no, was he, he Tailspin was Tailspin Baloo. Baloo. Uh, mm-hmm. I, this I, was I'm telling you, Disney, Disney Channel Afternoon. money. This was Disney Afternoon Avenue. Michael Eisner wants your Disney Channel <laughs> money. Well, he did. Yeah. Um, also, and I'm not crazy. I was like, where there used to be a place that was Ariel's Grotto, and you'd go and you'd meet Ariel, and it was actually called Triton's Gr- Garden, and it lasted only until 2008, which is the last, when, last time we were there before, when I saw it. That's where Pixie Hollow is now. Okay. So they have lots of meet and greet types. That's when things. they started building the uh, new Little Mermaid ride. Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's in California Adventure. Yeah. Right. Um. So Fantasyland has gone over different kind of iterations. For a while there, it was like circus themed, and then it was like medieval, and it kind of like jumps back and forth. But yeah, it used to be circus themed. Did you know that? That's scary. <laughs> so there's also some restaurants and refreshments but it's mostly like snacks there's a couple churro carts there's edelweiss snacks that's supposed to be pretty good um maurice's treats maurice being from beauty and the beast yeah that's a little snack cart um it's got those like it's got those churros that are circle yeah i don't remember what they're called Uh, circle churros circle churros (laughs) maurice's gyro i don't know yeah something there's some popcorn stands, but then the other one is the Red Rose Tavern and the Troubadour Tavern. And this is where you can get your turkey legs. That's why I wanted to shout this one out. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. I did not have a turkey leg. I, I will Sad. one one day have a turkey leg. Yes, you will. Leg. Just, just to have it. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't to. even like it that much, <laughs> but I will have it. There's also the Mad Hatter to get your hats in your ears. Uh, it's a small world toy shop. There's some Merlin's Marvelous Miscellany, that's, basically toys. This is like refurbished that, and it's that's true. Like just recently, mm. mm-hmm. and then there's the Bippity Boppity Boutique now open. Yeah, aren't they changing the name of of the Bippity Boppity Boutique to something else as well? I don't know if they're changing the name, but they're the big news coming out of there was any like they don't. Um, gender princesses and princes anymore or superhero oh they're adding superheroes as well yeah so people can like dress up as a captain marvel or something yeah they, they're they're making it uh more inclusive yeah. and, and embracing like superheroes and stuff but i thought they were changing the name it was like Impre- apprentice or something maybe it's just like within there i didn't know if they were fully changing the name no nah, i don't know I, um, I heard something about a name change so like, it might be the the experience they're changing the name of. And then the last thing, the plaque in front of the castle, it marks the spot where the Disneyland time capsule is buried. So it's sealed on the 40th anniversary of the park, and it contains different items from the history of Disney parks. It is scheduled to be open in the year 2035, because it was the 40 years, 40 years, right? Oh, so the 80th. Exactly. Man, 2035 is going to be the 80th. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> the uh, famed, the first big fireworks show, which was called Fantasy in the Sky Fireworks, was introduced in 1956, but Tinkerbell's first flight wasn't until 1961, and the first Tinkerbell was a former, former circus aerialist. Um, they really fling her down from that castle. They like, really it's do. It's probably good that she was a circle, circus aerialist. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, multiple shows have replaced this, but usually there's some kind of flying character. And usually, like, the classic is Tinkerbell, but yeah. 
Anyway. They, sh- they should send someone who doesn't fly down. Duh. <laughs> no. Uh. <laughs> so that's kind of like the history of Fantasyland. Um, where does Fantasyland like fall for you in terms of lands you like? At, at the bottom. The Matterhorn. No, nah, it's at the bottom. But ma- no, it is not. It is not below Toontown. Toontown doesn't exist right now. <laughs> Toontown's terrible. not a real. No. Toontown's not a real place. Toontown can't hurt you. <laughs> like the boogeyman. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're counting Toontown, then it's the second worst. Oh, I love Fantasyland. Um, it like it's probably not my well, it's not my favorite. We ranked all the Disneyland lands, Disneyland lands. But uh, I really like it, and like a lot of my memories of going when I was very young. It's good are for kids. Up in there. It's good mm-hmm. for kids. I like doing a blitz of it at, at late at night. Night was and, fun. Like, it makes it is very Disney y. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's, it's actually, also like a bunch of kitty rides. So I don't mind. Sorry, I, I like just, dark rides. Like I I do enjoy that, and I love Small World. I know you don't, but I love Small, Small World. World. Is is very painful i love small world very painful no, it's my, i love it it's, no. i really I would, have on my list of favorites i would go on any of the other rides like storybook land casey i Jr. love that too mm-hmm. love them all peter pan I love that one. wait in line for 40 minutes on peter pan i love it i don't like small world i love no. small world yes no. So i i like them all and everything it is hard to be in that we avoid that land during the middle of the day because it is so crowded. Yeah, there and there's lots of strollers. It's hard and... to walk with the strollers and everything. It was fun to do in the morning of Dapper Day and then at nighttime. That was fun it, to do. It is a good place for Dapper Day. Yeah, with um, the carousel and all the vintage. There's lot, so many opening day good, attractions. Lots of good uh, people watching on mm-hmm. Dapper Day. Mm-hmm. Lots of, uh, well, and even not, there are a lot of opening day attractions, but there's lots of just like general classic attractions. Absolutely. So yes, this was said to be Walt's favorite land. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> Anything else to add about Fantasyland? They need a, a new cool ride. They. I like what they've done with the dark rides. Mm. Like really, I really am, like Snow White. I, I I do appreciate the updates and the, the new animatronics and stuff. Update, Mr. Toad, please. Mm-hmm. I'm very nervous because. With the updates to Splash Mountain coming, I feel like that fits into New Orleans Square, and it's where and that it's really at. isolates Winnie, Winnie the, Pooh the Pooh more. So then, what are the chances of there just being this tiny little area of Winnie because the Pooh? Guess what replaced Mr. Toad in, in Disney World? That's what I'm saying. It's Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm worried that they're going to move Winnie the Pooh, and I actually like there being like a little hundred acre wood area over there. Yeah, I, I think like, it's really cool. I like. Winnie the Pooh being separate because like too. Winnie the Pooh's cool and yeah. it should be kind of separate. But it's gonna get sandwiched in there if they yeah. just put it in with Mr. Toad, like just know. shoved in there, and uh, then that line would be taken over more for Star Wars. I worry about which that. which is I'm I'm okay with that. No, I'm not. I want there to be a hundred acre wood area. More Star Wars, please. Well, more Star Wars is fine, but not at the expense of Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You're you're battling with my childhood emotions <laughs> now. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh or Star Wars? Huh. Oh. Winnie the Pooh with a lightsaber. No, not Winnie the Pooh with a lightsaber. Oh, bother. <laughs> the The premise behind um, Fantasyland was that, like, the the classic stories were, like, coming to life. And that's what Walt really wanted to explore. And I think he did that. Yeah. I think so. I, I Disneyland isn't Disneyland without Fantasyland. Exactly. Like, as much as I... It's not for me, specifically... No, but it doesn't have to be for you. It, it is very important. Exactly. Um, I did not have a quiz for you today. Oh, well, thank goodness. I have trivia for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we haven't done trivia in a while. Aren't you excited? Not especially. Oh, yes. You're excited now. Okay. Three questions for you. <sighs> excited? Yay! So one, one we already talked about, so it might only... It might be fewer than three questions. <laughs> I don't think I came up with a backpack. A backpack. A backup. A backpack. A backpack. Um, okay. First question. What, or where, sorry, like what attraction, where in Fantasyland, we used to be able to find a basketball court? And that's in the Matterhorn. I, I believe it's still there. There's a, it's not really a full basketball court. And the, and the, the rumor was that they... They put it in there because of the height of the mountain uh, 
was so was so high that you could only legally have one because of the sports if it was a sports arena it was the only way you could like legally have one but that's not true it's just the, it's just the staff break room up in the Matterhorn right um what I knew that one uh, well apparently <laughs> yeah it's just one net though it's not a court are, are, are you good I'm good I'm good, I'm good. I'll, stop. I'll stop I'm sorry so the drawbridge leading to Sleeping Beauty's castle is real. Yeah. And it can be lowered and, and like, raised yeah, and lowered. They don't yeah. do that anymore, though. It's only been raised twice. Yeah. I, I did hear about this. Tell me those times. So they lowered it on opening day. Yep. Um, and then when did they raise it? I don't remember. I did hear about it, though. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I, I did hear about it. Yeah, like, I could have told you it was only used twice no but you just can't remember the i other can't one? remember the reason okay fair enough it was like the a presidential visit or something okay okay cool and i'm gonna have a bonus question because you just like murdered that basketball court one <laughs> it did like, uh, it was a slam dunk <laughs> no yeah okay no. <laughs> there is a gold spike somewhere in the ground where in fantasy land um on the railroad track, I would imagine gold, gold spikes are usually a part of railroad tracks. So, like by the Fantasyland station of the railroad track, hmm. I don't know. Interesting. Go, golden spikes are like ceremonial things for railroad tracks. This is true. Generally. Generally. Okay. Should be. All right. That's your trivia. Oh, uh, you're gonna make. You're going to make me read this outro now after all that. After all that. That's so, a... but you can check next week to see if he's right or not. Yeah, I'm right about the basketball court, okay? <laughs> but I'll just... Here, uh, here, here, I'm yeah. court. I, got, I got like 10 <laughs> points from that. 10 out of 3. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. 10 out of 3 for that one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's our episode mm-hmm. this week. You can uh, go ahead and contact us on some social media. There's like some Instagram stuff. Yep. Some Twitter stuff. Yep. And there's no TikToky stuff. Nope. I don't have any TikToky stuff. TikToky. Facebook no. is the other one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, go yeah. ahead and do that. Yeah, do those things. <laughs> uh, thanks to El Mule. Thanks El Mule. He. Thanks uh, Trevor. <laughs> he, he did up that awesome custom theme song that you heard at the top of the show, mm-hmm. and you can find a link to his work at our website, which. Is disneya.wixsite.com slash podcast. Mm-hmm. And you can find links to those social media accounts I was talking about yep. on that website as well. Yep. Because I'm not going to say all the, the, nope. the ats here. It's, it's kinda... Disney A. Go to those things. For yeah. Sure. Just, find them. Uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can also find us on YouTube. You're going to mm-hmm. post this on YouTube. You got that working again. The More YouTubes. or less. <laughs> YouTubes. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> If you if you want to listen to us on YouTube, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, and then you should also review us. Yeah. On Apple Podcasts. Yes. Well, anything, but especially Apple Podcasts. Yeah. That's the one that like that that's matters with algorithms. The algorithms. The oh. algorithm. It's very menacing sounding. Yeah. Well, the algorithms are menacing. <laughs> it's one of the top five villains of our time, <laughs> really. That was amazing. <laughs> that was very witty. Uh-huh. Concerned about the other four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and in addition to reviewing us, if you know someone else who might like listening to us, because mm-hmm. like who wouldn't? Really we're awesome. Pretty, pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Also very humble. Totally, it's like in our top ten qualities. Yeah. If you, if you have to narrow it down to ten. If you have to narrow yeah. it down to ten, right? Um, but you should recommend them that, that they listen to us, yeah. so we can talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Talk Disney. Talk Disney. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Pop culture stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. you should join us next week. Yeah. You should join us every week. Guess what we're doing next week. Why are you hitting me and poking me while you say that? It's time. Yep. For another blind date. Oh, are you going to live tweet it again as you watch three? uh, No, no. It's your turn. You get to go on a blind date with Disney. Oh, good. I'm going to pick something out. Yep. On the Disney Plus. Yep. And you're going to watch it. Can it be something from my list? 
No. Well, it, it, I will put it on your list. <laughs> oh. But it won't be already oh, residing yeah. on your list. Dang. <laughs> and then you'll watch it. I don't like you can You can live tweet it if I you like. I don't like these, this plan. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good plan. It's, it's an excellent plan. I will post it to Instagram stories. Oh, okay. I do Instagram. You do Twitter. You could, like, film yourself. While you're watching it. Crying? Crying. Rocking back and forth? On a, on your Instagram <laughs> TikTok feed or whatever it's called. I don't know. Uh, reels? I'm hip. And with it. Uh, fellow so, children. So with it. Okay. Well, that 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 does it. I, we're, we're done. Yep. Okay. So I'm Krista. And I'm Brandon. And until that next adventure, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thanks for listening to Disney A. Fantasy. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. Very good. Oh, wow.